Do most of your prints look clean and pretty, but sometimes have ugly or weak sections for unknown reasons? The underlying issue is rarely talked about, but in the next few minutes, I'll show you how to fix it with the right settings for the right situation using different examples. So you can get cleaner, stronger and more reliable prints on any machine. This is possible in every slicer, but we'll do it in Orca slicer because it's nearly identical to all other popular slicers. Let's get right into it. The first test print is one of my popular planter designs available to my thanks supporters and resellers. We'll start off with a basic print profile. It has two walls, a fitting top pattern and slightly reduced speeds to get high quality prints. I also recommend enabling avoid crossing walls for less stringing. Let's print it out and take a close look at the result with studio lighting to see every little defect. The print turned out fine, except this whole upper section looks like I printed it personally with a 3D printing pen after one too many beers. All jokes aside, I used a high quality printer, dried my PLA spool and like a good German citizen, even calibrated my filament. So what's going on here? It's hard to catch just by watching the printing process. Can you see the printing problem? No? Then let's take a close look at the slicer preview of the upper section. Once the printer is done printing the walls shown in orange, it starts white gap filling moves in between. But it saves a lot of these very tiny extrusions to print last before it starts a new layer. These filler moves are incredibly small and spread out. Your printer hates stuff like that. Let's quickly understand why. Tiny extrusions lead to retracting filament out of the nozzle and then pushing it back in for just a moment over and over again, only extruding a tiny bit but not enough to keep up nozzle pressure. And worse, may even empty it completely due to oozing. So after these tiny dots here, we have very low nozzle pressure and an extremely ugly next print line in return, which is the first wall of the next layer for this test print. But wait. This is just the tip of the iceberg. When moving the seam out of the corner, you can see how bad the print result actually is. It gets even worse with filament that oozes a lot, like this white PLA or materials like PETG or TPU. Depending on the model, you can get this problem all over the print, like on the inside of the hidden box compartment, which is normally used for a push lock mechanism to hide a small key inside, but definitely won't work like this. Let's take a look at different solutions and other misprints that indicate related low pressure problems so you can get exceptional prints for any model in the future. A great solution for our planter and many other models is changing the wall generator to Arachne. This way the slicer uses variable line width to fill all these tiny gaps to print the wall in the middle in one go. Setting the view to line width clearly shows how the lines get wider in these sections. No more sneaky little extrusions for us. This change alone leads to a way cleaner print, where the seam is barely visible. Now we somehow only have little defects left in this pattern crossing section. Another look at the preview of this section shows that we still have some tiny extrusions left here. Now some of you might have seen this filter out tiny gaps option. This can sometimes help, but changes nothing in our case, even when using classic mode. We instead want to set our wall line width to 0.5 mm to encourage wider lines and in the Arachne settings set the minimum wall length to 2 mm. With that we get rid of all the tiny extrusions and ensure proper nozzle pressure. Using the challenging to print white PLA we get a super clean print which doesn't look like a disappointment and I'd happily give to my grandma. If you like this detailed type of content so far Leave a like, subscribe or comment below. Depending on your print, you might want to play around with minimum wall width and wall transitioning filter margin as well until you have a satisfying result. I leave a link to the Arachne settings wiki in the description for more help. In rare cases, the Arachne wall generator can lead to weird print issues and always takes a lot longer to slice. Here's an extra tip if you still have to use classic mode. Most designs are made with an exact wall width in mind, like around 3 times 0.4 mm walls here. Do not resize designs to weird sizes without changing the line width when using classic mode. 
I see this being done by professionals in my consulting work all the time. This can lead to an extremely thin gap fill line shown in white. Let's switch to line width. This is way too thin. And just like before, this also leads to low nozzle pressure, unclean and weak prints. A small line width adjustment to 0.48 mm is way better and fixes the issue immediately. Our problem is not always this obvious. So let's dive a little deeper after I show you the very free solutions this video sponsor PCBWay offers. PCBWay takes out any settings guesswork for your custom PCBs, CNC parts, metal 3D printing and more. Just select your production process, upload a geometry file and select your quantity plus material to get an instant quote for your custom part that fits your budget. Me and many others can highly recommend trying them out. Thank you to PCBWay for supporting this channel. This next example is a leaf prototype with a latch to secure cables to a surface. So far so good. But during my violent testing phase, it would always break at the exact same site for some reason. Let's analyze the slicer preview for a second. It's all pretty basic, except the light orange lines are top surface ironing which can give amazing top surfaces for models like this. But a closer look at my broken prototype shows that most of them break exactly after that ironing layer, no matter what filament we choose. Showing the flow rate for the preview, we can see that it's incredibly low for the ironing layer. Increasing the print speed a little will increase the flow rate and help keep the nozzle filled. Increase the iron flow rate a little bit as well. These changes alone doubled our flow rate. So sometimes increasing the speed can be part of the solution. But don't go too fast or your ironing will look ugly. With that done, it would now sometimes still break two layers above, like shown here. And sure enough, this section contains one of those incredibly thin lines. We could use the Arachne wall generator, but I also designed this part just a tiny bit wider so now even classic mode prints a thick line. The last little detail we overlooked is at the end of the ironing layer. It's those sneaky little extrusions again. After those, the next layer starts with our problem section. If you can't get rid of tiny ironing or small top layer extrusions, no matter what you try, I still know a sneaky little workaround that will help. Go over to your time-lapse settings and enable the smooth time-lapse. This way, after each layer the printer will go take a picture and then go over to the time-lapse tower to extrude some filament. This will fill up the nozzle and result in a clean next layer start. It's a weird fix, but it works. Using all those tricks in combination, pulling on the latch as hard as the TPU allows still doesn't destroy anything and we also get a clean print all around. On to the last trick. This time we'll print out the TPU latch with standard settings. Like always, the filament is dried and calibrated. The print result looks absolutely horrible and this would rip faster than a fart in a yoga class. Sudden and irreversible. One source of the problem are the top layer lines. These aren't as tiny as before. But for difficult filaments like TPU, printing this won't lead to steady nozzle pressure. So under your strength tab, Always choose the top, bottom and internal solid infill patterns that lead to long continuous extrusions, like the concentric option in this case. At first glance, the preview already looks way better. A look at the printed model easily shows the difference. There's just a little bit of stringing left here and there. No big accidents with this one. But if we enable showing the retractions in the visual tab, we can see multiple pink dots where the printer has to retract. You want to avoid any unnecessary retractions with hard to print filaments. Adjusting the first layer line width and the wall line width just a tiny bit will get rid of all the retractions and lead to long continuous printing lines. Now it will come out clean with any type of filament. This is a print grandma would approve of and not some involuntary torture test for your 3D printer. Remember, make it as easy as possible for your machine. Try fixing your own stubborn print issues and comment below if this video has helped you out. Click here for more videos like this one and thank you for watching.